Hi, this is David from Electric Teaching, and I'm doing part two of my Python code to do the quadratic formula and more. And so right now we have uh, defined a main menu and have it called up with the Python traditional way of uh, calling it up. If name equals main, then run this function. And the function brings in a math library so that we can do the math square root down here, part of the quadratic formula. And uh, I'd like to add on a little bit more to what we're doing here. We've imported, we've uh, changed uh, the inputs, uh, not imported, excuse me, we've inputted the values, we've asked for input, uh, we've changed them to uh, real numbers, and we've printed them. And uh, I'd like to do, like I said, some more things with the quadratic function that we're looking at, or the one given by the A, B, and C. First thing I like to do is put in some labels here. Um, some uh, comments here. I uh, usually like to make sure everybody understands what I'm doing and when I look back at the code it's always nice to see the comments to make sure I understand what I was looking at. It's gonna say not you, excuse me, uh, input uh, the A, B, and C values by the user. All right. And the next thing we do is we change them into real numbers. We change them into real numbers. Uh, these can be real or uh, it's going be rational or irrational. Um, they will handle both. So change the input, which is read as text, to real values. Um, we could also make them integers if we wanted to, but we'll leave them uh, as uh, uh, decimal numbers is the way we want to think about it. And we run the quadratic formula here and print it. So that's what we've done here. Run or evaluate the quadratic formula. All right. And I like to tell my students that we plug and chug those values and we'll get the x solutions, uh, the two x solutions, one from the positive of the plus minus situation and one the negative there. Okay, since we're calculating these items, one of the things that happens is um, we could get imaginary solutions. So even though we've set up these variables to handle real solutions, imaginary is from the square root getting a negative value down here. So we've got to protect that. And um, we want to be sure that that doesn't happen or at least that the program handles it. So I want to teach you how to use an if statement. Okay, and the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out what the value is inside the square root. This is called the discriminant in mathematics. So up here, I'm going to add a little bit more to our variable situation. I'm going to say D is equal to, D is equal to the calculation from above, and that is B squared. In fact, you know what? Sometimes it's better to copy and paste. We've already written it right here. Let's copy and paste it in. So this is the discriminant, B squared minus 4ac, b squared minus 4ac. Now down here we can actually change this to be a d. Now it's actually taking the square root of d. Since we've made a variable to handle that value, it's nice to actually use that there and it makes our code look a little bit cleaner. But we want to test to see if this value is not positive or zero, not negative, or test if it's negative basically. If it's Negative, if it's not, let's see, if it's less than zero, if D is less than zero, we need to, we need to let the user know that you have discovered a, an imaginary solution with the, the parabola or the quadratic function that we're looking at. So what we have here is uh, we need to tell we need to tell. We'll use the, we need to tell the user. Give them feedback. We're going to use the print command. We'll use a single quote here. A single quote. So we want to say print. The solution is imaginary. And, you know, it would be very cool. Imaginary. I'm spelling here. Okay, I'm sorry. The solution is imaginary. And it would be really cool if we could let us let the user know what the discriminant value is. So before I close the quote, I'll say the discriminant, discriminant, the, the, the discriminant, discriminant, sorry, I'm trying to figure that out, discriminant, I was misspelling it here, Dis I-N-A-N-T, 
The discriminant is space, and what I'll do is I'll then close the quote, put a comma in, and there's where we'll say the value D. And this will print actually the sentence in green here and the value of the discriminant. So if that's the case, we just pretty much stop the program there. Else, else. So if you want to do something other than the, the, the condition up above, where if the condition up above is not met, then we want to do this. So else. And now what we're going to do is put in the rest of this equation and what I'm, or the rest of this uh, program. What I'm going to do is just highlight it and hit the tab hit the tab uh, key on the keyboard. And what that does is nest this inside of the else part of the statement. And so what we have is if the discriminant is less than zero, we're going to print the solution is an the solution is imaginary and the discriminant is comma what it what the value. So we'll give it there. And then else we'll go ahead and finish off the quadratic formula for them. Let's test this. We're going to save. I'm going to do a control S or a save, command S if you're on a Mac. And we're going to do a run module, run module. We're going to see what happens here. Now let's put in something that will be imaginary. So I'm thinking of a parabola that's clearly above the x-axis, no x-intercepts. Those are the times we get imaginary solutions in the graphical sense. So I'm going to put in all positive numbers and just make sure I put in a high enough y-intercept. That This usually guarantees I'm well above the y, uh, excuse me, the x-axis. And so the answer is the solution is imaginary and the discriminant is negative 111. It worked. Test it again just to be sure. I'm going to run it and make sure we test our uh, other values. Let's go ahead and do one of my favorites. Let's do a difference of squares. This time I'll do 1x squared, no, no x, no middle term, and a minus 9. This difference of squares makes conjugate pairs, as I tell my students. In this case, it kicks out the three and negative three answers. So it seems to be working beautifully. Well, let's go ahead, and, and if you can hear my children in the background, I do apologize. Hang in there, kids. Okay, so what we're going to do is take advantage of the fact we're calculating some answers here. Let's go ahead and put a comment in up here to explain what we've done. Let's see, we've calculated the discriminant. So it's just a quick little comment. Discriminants here. And down here, we're testing the discriminants. So it's a little pound sign, a little uh, number sign, means this won't be read by Python. So it's just for my notes only, or I guess your notes as well, any viewers' notes. So we've got uh, calculating. What we're doing is testing the discriminant, testing the discriminant here to see if it's positive. OK? And um, if it's positive, it's negative. We'll kick out imaginary solution. Positive, we'll do this. Now, if it's got a uh, other things we can do, hmm, the negative b over 2a, that's the actual x coordinate of the vertex. That's the actual x coordinate of the vertex. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to actually calculate that value right now. I'm going to calculate that value. Uh, let's call this the um, x uh, v. That is the, or actually, what I like to do is v x. Let's do a capital v x. So the vertex x coordinate, that's how I'm indicating it. Let's put a little comment. Okay, a little comment on here. So we're saying we are calculating the vertex of the parabola in this case, or of the quadratic function here. So the vertex of the parabola is vx is equal to that same negative b over 2a. So this is where I'm going to go negative b divided by 2 star a, 2 star a. Now we've got the, the x coordinate. Let's get the y coordinate. Let's call this the vy. Before I actually calculate that, might as well go ahead and change this. <clears throat> this is, this negative b over 2a is now simplified to a v, <clears throat> excuse me, x. And so now we're cleaning up our code. And maybe, I don't know, maybe if you're at home, you're understanding the quadratic formula just a bit better. So we've got the vertex, the x coordinate of the vertex there. Okay, and we've got um, the y coordinate now is the plug and chug, the evaluating of this vx in the equation. So here's where I'm going to use my a's and b's again. The equation is a star a times r vx, r vx squared. So I'm going to do a star star 2. So this is plugging, basically, basically making the plug and chug of our x coordinate into, to get, into the function to get the y coordinate. 
we now are going to add, okay, B star, B star, that same VX, and we're going to go plus C. So this will actually tell us exactly where the vertex is, both the V and the Y. Let's go ahead and print this, print, okay? And let's use a little style with this one instead of just printing the numbers. Let's say the vertex, the vertex is at, and what I'm going to do is get a little clever here, so stay with me. I'm going to use, I'm going to be in and out of this text part of uh, the print, the output. So the vertex is at, open parentheses, close the quote. Now, I need to put the VX value in here. So I need to comma separate the text part of this. So the comma separates the text to the next thing to be displayed, VX. A comma separates the next thing to be displayed. So I'm going to do single quote, comma. This comma, in this case, is just a visual to be placed out there. It is just a text item. So in quotes, I need to put a comma as the next thing to be displayed. A comma, again, this one's in black, so watch for that. And now I'm going to put in the VY coordinate. And again, comma for the next thing to be displayed. And here I'm going to close the parenthesis in text format. So in quote, close parenthesis, single quote again. <clears throat> so this will have a nice fancy way of displaying our answer. I probably should do the same thing down here with the print. And if I get a chance, I will. But I'm running out of time already. So right now I have the vertex printed out. I'll be testing for the discriminant. There'll be some more things I can do here, but I feel we've got a really good project for you, for you and your students, hopefully. Let's save this and run it. I'm going to be punching in some numbers that I know will kick out a vertex and some X solutions. So let's put in a 2, maybe a negative, I don't know, 5, and maybe a nice low Y-intercept of negative 7. Oh, we have an error, and I love finding errors because it's always a learning moment. Um, yep, it tells me right here. This is why, you know, I have no problem making errors or accidentally having errors here. As you, then you can learn how to read this and figure it out. In my main program, it had an error. At this line, in fact, line 21, it says, it did not like this because the float object is not callable. So apparently, it just did not like the way I displayed this. And if you look carefully, I was trying to say divide. So let's throw the divide sign in and do this one more time. Save and run. Um, oh, so my screen's kind of losing its place over here, and you can barely see it. Let's bring it up. Okay, the coefficient A. Uh, let's do a 2 and a negative 5 again and a negative 7 for the constant. And now we've got displayed the vertex is at 1.25 comma negative 6.1808. And our x-intercepts or our solutions, if we set it equal to 0, are at 3.5 and negative 1.0. Hope you're enjoying this. I'm sorry it went a bit long here, and I do apologize for any uh, uh, screaming in the background from my children uh, uh, just going through their night routine. I apologize. And I'm David from Electric Teaching. I uh, look forward to uh, having you guys uh, come out and watch more of my code display later.